Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you the top five ways to help secure your iPhone. Now, I've partnered with LastPass, who sponsored this video to help show you how to do that. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a more secure password. So if we're using Touch ID and Face ID, but we still need to enter our password here, it really shouldn't just be four or six digits. It really should be alphanumeric. So let's go into the phone, go to settings, then we'll scroll down to face ID and passcode or touch ID and passcode, put in our password. And I've set this to something you should never use one, two, three, four, five, six, just to show you an example. But to change this, we want to go down to change passcode. Then again, put in the same password and then down at the bottom, go to passcode options and change it to custom alphanumeric code. And this will allow us to change it to something different. So, Preferably you should have a capital letter, maybe some symbols and some numbers. So just for this example, we'll put in Zolotech one and then exclamation point, I guess we'll do that again. Now we'll hit done and this may take a moment to actually set up on your phone. And once it's done, we'll have a much more secure passcode. So we'll wait for it to finish. So you'll see we're at the home screen and now we have the keyboard, not just numbers to enter our password. So let's go ahead and enter it. The one we just set up. We'll hit done and we're in. Now the second tip has to do with the lock screen. The lock screen gives access to a lot of information by default that it probably shouldn't. And let me show you what I mean. We'll lock the phone again. So it requires a passcode on the lock screen. We'll turn this display off, turn it back on. And right now I have access to Siri. I also have access to the control center, which allows me to turn on airplane mode. So if someone stole your phone or you misplaced it, you could no longer track it via find my iPhone or iCloud.com. You also have access to Siri and notifications and pretty much a lot of information that people should not have access to through Siri in particular. So let's go ahead and unlock the phone. We'll put in our passcode. Now we need to change this by going to settings. We'll go to face ID or touch ID and passcode again, put in our password. We'll turn the airplane mode back on. And if we scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see we have some options and all of these things are turned on by default. So let's turn off wallet, home control, reply with message, Siri control center, today view is probably okay. Notification center. These things can be okay, but it's, really a good idea to have some of those turned off. Now the third tip has to do with different passwords for apps and websites. If you're like me, you're using different applications and websites all of the time. And really you should never use the same password twice. And that's where our sponsor comes in LastPass. LastPass helps us remember all of those passwords and gives us a security score based on our strength of passwords and whether or not we've used them more than once. And that's something I actually really appreciate here. You see, I've created websites that have duplicate passwords on two different ones. So they're the same password on two different sites. And I've created this little login here so that I can share this with you without actually sharing my passwords. So you'll see, I have a bunch of different websites and I can log into one right from here. Just tap on it and launch it or copy it, but we'll just launch. It brings us to the website and it integrates straight with face ID or touch ID. So we'll use this one. It's a fake password, but you'll see it auto fills it. And then we can log in. Now the same is true as if you're on another website, you go into Safari, maybe you want to go to google.com log into that. It integrates the same way. So we can tap sign in. And again, it's pulling from LastPass. We can just use this one and it will auto fill for us. We can hit next. And again, it will auto fill for us. So it's a great way to manage all of those passcodes. And it really takes the anxiety out of all of that. Now, not only do you have the passcodes, you can go into notes. If you have something you want to keep that's secure or fill in forms as well and credit card information or whatever you'd like. And it integrates across different platforms. So I love to use this because it lets me synchronize my passwords across iPhone, Android, Windows, or Mac, and then log in with a singular password or my face to use them across any of those platforms. So you'll see this isn't my actual address or credit card information, but you can store all of that securely. So that's a great way to manage all of those different passwords without worrying about it and having a lot of anxiety about it. But thanks again to LastPass for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, the fourth tip has to do with data protection. Now, if you've got an iPhone where 
you don't want anyone to see your information and after 10 attempts you want to wipe it you can do that but this is a little bit different than other manufacturers might have it doesn't just wipe it after 10 attempts if you have kids so that's one of my concerns i could put in the password 10 times and wipe the phone the way apple handles this is really simple we just go to settings again face id and passcode And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we have erase data. We'll turn this on and after 10 failed attempts, it will wipe the phone. The good thing about this though, is if you put in the password five times, it will lock it out. So let me show you that we'll lock the phone like this cancel. And then I'll just put in some random letters and we'll do that until it locks. Now it's disabled for one minute. Now, after you attempt this again, it can lock for five minutes, then 15 minutes, then one hour. So if you're doing it by mistake, chances are it's not going to lock over and over and over. You have to wait for this minute in order to get back in and you can still make an emergency phone call if you need to, but that way your data is secured. And if it gets in the wrong hands, they can't try it more than once and it will wipe the phone. And then all of your data is encrypted, secured, and you'll never lose any of it. Now I've unlocked the phone and we're back in. And the next tip has to do with Safari browsing. Now, if you're in the web browser and you want to clear that data, you can clear it pretty simply by going to your settings and scrolling down to Safari and in Safari at the bottom, you can just clear history and website data. That's one way to get rid of some information, but it's not the best way to browse the internet when you're using your Safari browser. And what you really should be doing is turning on some of these options, such as prevent cross site tracking. And some of this is built into iOS 12 to prevent others from tracking you, selling you ads you may or may not want. And again, we can block all cookies. Sometimes that doesn't allow you to use different websites, but fraudulent website warning, ask websites not to track me. That's not always great, but camera and microphone access. I turn that on by default. Uh, but if you turn this off, there's no longer access to your camera or your microphone from the web browser whatsoever. So if you're worried about different websites snooping on you, turn it off. Also check for Apple pay. I don't really want that unless I'm on a secure store in an app. So these are all the things you can change. And then if you clear history and website data, it wipes it across multiple devices. So as long as you're using iCloud, it will just wipe it across to all of them. And it's really handy to use. So if you have that turned on, it will help lock everything down a little bit better. The last tip or a little bonus tip has to do with something I cover all of the time. And that's software updates. Apple regularly updates their software and you want to check that by going to your settings general and then software software update. If you have automatic updates turned on, you'll already be protected automatically. If you don't just check it here and Apple regularly releases iOS updates to make sure that you're protected against vulnerabilities with many security patches. Many of these minor updates have security patches and that should protect you. Hopefully along with all of the other tips, you'll have a very secure iPhone and people can't get your data when they shouldn't. Let me know if you have any other tips in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.